What's the word, y'all? The NBA is uh is a very crazy slash funny place. I want to remind you that I filmed these videos right after the last game of the day. Y'all don't see them until the next morning, but I film them right after the last game of the day, right? And the reason I'm bringing that up is because in yesterday's video, I said Nicholas Claxton saved Steve Nash's job because Clax had like 19 points, 10 rebounds, and prevented the Indiana Pacers from having his full-on comeback. Well, three minutes, three minutes before I published that video, talking about last night's later game, Steve Nash got fired. So the only thing, if you look in the comment section, is Kenny is, is making fun of Kenny saying that Nicholas Claxton saved the job of Steve Nash, and he got fired three minutes before. It's crazy time. But the majority of this video is going to be talking about the Brooklyn Nets and them firing Steve Nash. Uh, I've had a few hours to really think it through instead of pushing out a real response video right after it happened. And I do have some thoughts, but I'm going to talk about these, these four games within the association really, really quick. Starting off with the Golden State Warriors Miami Heat game. The Warriors have lost, lost three straight games and they have not won on the road just yet. If you're a Heat fan, this is the type of game that you normally win. This is the Miami Heat basketball that we've seen over the last two years that we haven't seen through the first couple weeks of this season. It sucks that Tyler Hero got injured early, mostly, uh, not mostly, but partially because I had him in my prize pick entry, but mostly for them. Uh, I mean, he's a super crucial part of your team's success, so I hope that, you know, it's nothing serious. Um, but it was cool to see Duncan Robinson look like the person, the player that you gave $90 million to a season and a half ago. And, you know, at the end of the day, they grinded out this game and it felt like a Miami Heat game. On the other side of things, the Warriors losing three straight games. I mean, this season could not have started... I would say any worse considering the circumstances coming off this NBA championship. You got the turmoil within the offseason that I think for the most part, everybody's looked past because here we are. Uh, and, and the news cycle in the NBA is just like this. We talk about Steve Nash being fired today. And in three days, that's not even going to be the topic of the NBA. So the punch is way behind people. But you have the inconsistencies from Jordan Poole, which makes sense. I mean, he's like a 23-year-old player. You have the inconsistencies of like a Wiseman, a Moody, or like Kaminga who barely gets time. And then you miss the players like Gary Payton II. second. I kind of underestimated how important he was to the team's defense or even Otto Porter they're relying on a lot of people that might not have the defensive identity that some of the people they lost and because of that they don't really defend like you expect them to today's game they they gave up more open transition threes that I've seen and, and more than I, I can even count so uh they got to figure that out I'm not panicking um but they got to figure that out and Klay Thompson plays too much hero ball for me the, the shot that he shot with like 23-ish seconds left on the clock, I don't understand. I know he's a splash brother. He's one of the greatest shooters of all time. But like considering the circumstances, considering how contested he was, damn, bad shot. Next game, Orlando Magic blow a game. I don't remember how many they were up by going to. I think they were up by like 15 points in the third quarter. And then Shea and Poku just turned it up. I mean, I could talk about Shea all day. And I'm, I'm really, really considering starting like a spotlight series on days like today where it's not a ton of games. Luckily, we got the Steve Nash thing to talk about. Where we don't have a ton to talk about. Shea has to be a spotlight player because he just consistently does whatever the hell he wants on the basketball court. I, I, I put money on the fact that he was going to be an all-star this season. And as long as he stay healthy, I'm getting my money back come February. He has been amazing. And I think this is the third straight win for the, uh, for the OKC Thunder and the third straight comeback win. They figure it out. The Timberwolves end up losing to the Phoenix Suns. And, and I've been seeing a lot of my comment section. Kenny, why don't you talk about the Suns? The Suns are one of the two teams in basketball right now that are top five in offense and top five in defense. The other team is the Cleveland Cavaliers. And the reason why you probably don't see a lot of people here, a lot of people talking about the Phoenix Suns, since we did it for the last two seasons. And I think a lot of people have the, okay, now prove it to me come playoff time mindset. But me, I'm still enjoying a lot of the stuff that they're doing. Chris Paul might not be the most efficient player anymore offensively as far as shooting the ball or only averaging, I think, nine points per game in a season. Today, 12 assists, one turnover, and the turnover that he got, he got a technical foul for. It just wrapped up, and actually, the officiating today was a little bit weirder than we've seen in recent history, because even Jordan Poole got called for, like, palming slash turn, uh, double dribble or traveling, whatever. They, they're definitely refing ball handling a little bit different today, so I'm interested to see how that affects other point guards, but he's Chris Paul's been so consistent getting his teammates open. Devin Booker didn't have a crazy game today because you had Mikkel Bridges taking off and, and Cam Johnson taking off. Jacques Landell still has the green light to shoot threes, and it's just, anytime DeAndre Aiden is out with an injury, they figure out a way to piece together the center position, the center minutes, and they have not lost a step whatsoever with Aiden being out. Makes me wonder that once he's eligible to be traded, once will we hear more rumors about him and uh, figuring out what's next for the roster. Okay, the Bulls slash Brooklyn Nets game, we can tie into the Steve Nash being fired. It felt like it was time for Steve Nash. Um, 
I think he wasn't put in a great position as a head coach. And I don't know if you remember last season, uh, Kyrie Irving came to the podium and said, I don't feel like we have a, a, a head coach. And you can interpret that a couple different ways. You can interpret it as, oh, Steve Nash was just one of the dudes so much that like he was so much good of a player coach that he didn't even feel like a head coach. But we know that's not true. We know that's not we know that's not what he meant. This man was appointed by his superstar players and Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving to be the the head coach because they felt like they didn't really need one. And one thing we are learning uh, night in and night out is that coaching does matter, even if it's not for X's and O's and stuff, but maintaining a locker room. And Steve Nash said that they didn't listen to him anymore. Right. I guess they parted ways was what Woj and Shams are saying that he wasn't fired, but they parted ways because he thought he lost the locker room. And, and, and Joe Sy kind of sees that as well. But this is the reality of the situation. The offseason, Kevin Durant said, either you trade me or you fire Steve Nash. And, and Kevin Durant saw something that a lot of people saw. You know, I even made a video um, before the season started saying that I can't tell you if Steve Nash is a decent coach, a bad coach, or anything based on the resume that he had. He had coached like 100-something games and 150-ish games and only 60 of those that he had KD and Kyrie. That's a very small sample size. And only, I think, 14 of those that he have KD, Kyrie, and James Harden. Like, the sample size was extremely small for Steve Nash for us to really determine if he was a good coach. But as we've seen coming into the season, Okay, now you got your big three, if you want to call it that. You got your three max players. Now let's see what you got to do. And the sets that they were running were bad. They still didn't defend. They still didn't rebound. And then, obviously, uh, like he mentioned, he had lost the locker room. So it was time. But you could have done this come off season and just had a plethora of different head coaching opportunities or head coaching candidates to come into the job. It is rumored, all but confirmed, that Ime Udoka is going to be the next guy. I don't really know what to say or even have an opinion about all of this um because he he was suspended for the boston celtics for a reason he was investigated he had some misconduct within the, within the the workplace it feels like all sports leagues not just the nba are, are willing to look past certain things if you're damn good at your job and it's just like i i don't i don't want to i don't know where the line is crossed you know what i'm saying it's two weeks outside of basketball for Ime Udoka a good enough punishment for what he did like that's not what this should be about but it's something that should be talked about nonetheless so Steve Nash gets fired right and I know that the Chicago Bulls are on national TV uh going against the Brooklyn Nets and I have no hope in mind because y'all know once a team fires their coach that next week or so is usually like oh snap we so excited now that guy is out of the locker room we got to worry about him we go go out there and play our best basketball and they proceeded to do the same thing that they were doing before don't hate Jacques Vaughn he's a really good uh, assistant coach but the things were the same I mean the body language on this team even after the guy that they wanted to be fired was fired was still at an all-time low I don't understand and and usually in situations like this it, it, it's been spoken about plenty of times before when you have a superstar caliber player or multiple of those caliber players and you're making a decision as of like changing the head coach the person gets talked about at least a little bit i don't know how much input they really get but like you can't tell me that that when david black got got fired from the cavaliers that lebron wasn't immediately in those meetings thinking tyron lou is about to be our guy this man kd said he found out about the firing when he woke up from a nap when he looked at the tv and it was espn so there was no communication between Joe Sy and his superstar players that they were gonna do the thing and I don't know if that's Joe Sy's fault. I don't know if that's Kevin Durant's fault. I don't know. But this is just ultimate amount of turmoil within this Brooklyn Nets organization. And then they lose tonight's game. And this man, Cam Thomas, goes to Instagram and, and puts in his bio, free Cam Thomas. <laughs> if it ain't one thing, it's another. We got rid of our head coach of problems. And now the ninth, 12th man on the roster say he wants to be freed. There is nothing but news and turmoil within this organization. And it's it's kind of insane how every single day something new pops up. So they go out there and they play against the Chicago Bulls. And similarly to like every single game this season, they end up going up to some extent and they end up blowing a game. The biggest lead for the Brooklyn Nets in the first half was 12 points. And they end up losing um, ab about by nine, but they were down by 12 at one point. That has been the consensus over the entire season so far. Where they could get you two, two really good quarters. And this one, they got to the fourth quarter. And Zach Levine himself outscored the entire team. This game was Kevin Durant, Yuta Watanabe, and, and Royce O'Neal versus all. Because Kyrie didn't come to play. Shout out to Alex Caruso and Ayo DeSumo. Them boys actually come out and clamp up. 
but the team is just in so much turmoil that like i mean he may you don't is he fixing this right now like this team is so bad defensively i don't think that even if we brought in the, the greatest defensive coach of all time whoever the hell that is that he's going to be able to during the season change up the mindset the effort that you want on the defensive side of the ball i saw a tweet oh i saw a tweet that i thought was really really good and i think we should bring it up they were questioning how good would Ime Udoka be without Joe Mazzula and, and Will Hardy as his assistants? Because as we are seeing right now, those two dudes can coach their ass off. That's only two weeks into their careers as head coaches, but Joe Mazzula got the, the Boston Celtics looking damn good, and Will Hardy got a team that people thought was going to win 20 games looking like the best team in basketball. So now we got Ime Udoka, and potentially, it ain't, it ain't official just yet, because um, I think Sean Marks said he's going to do his due diligence and look at other candidates, whatever. We have... Ime Udoka, Jacques Vaughn, and then the rest of the staff who still aren't good right now. And you want this guy who has hung his hat on defensive identity to turn this roster into a competent defensive team? I'm not saying it's impossible, but he's got a lot of work to do. I, I do believe in second chances, do not get me wrong. But like two weeks of absence after, you know, it comes public that you did some bad stuff. It's not long enough. What are you about to have Josh Primo get picked up next week? We about to have uh, Miles Bridges sign another contract very soon. Like the, the consequences for these bad actions in sports are not nearly as high as they probably should be. And I think a lot of people look at the Ime Udoka situation and think it was just a consensual relationship with a staffer, but it was much deeper than that. And, and we saw <laughs> as soon as they found we found out that Ime Udoka was about to be the next head coach or probably going to be the next co head coach, a leak drop instantly of some more stuff he did. And I'm assuming that every single day over the next, I don't know how long, there's going to be more information about this private case. Because if the Boston Celtics are wiping their hands of the situation, somebody is going to talk. And somebody is going to tell you more of the stuff that he did. You know, so I, I, I don't I don't really know. Ethically, it's hard to have those conversations, especially on a channel like this. I mean, it was just September 8th, 2022. Joe Sy tweeted, our front office and coaching staff have my support. We will make decisions in the best interest of the Brooklyn Nets. And he thought in the best interest of his team was to bring Steve Nash back. And here we are two weeks into the season and it's over with. I mean, right now it's a poorly ran team with a, with a team that don't feel like they love each other. They don't fight for each other, bro. They don't have the passion with each other. That's just what I'm seeing on the court. You don't every single game this season, they've blown the lead to some extent. They have the talent to get those leads. But they can't close it out. They, they go too they go too long of just bad basketball and teams take advantage of that. You know? Shout out to my Bulls, bro. Shout out to my Bulls because I, I ain't I wasn't feeling great after the last two games. I'll be honest. We lost to the San Antonio Spurs, who are good at basketball. And then we lost to Joel Embiid. I wasn't feeling very great. And then we come out here and I feel good again because Ayo Dasumu was a vocal leader in year number two. And guess what? Patrick Williams had a couple possessions in today's game where I was like, damn. The midi looking good. Get into the basket. The defense is still, you know, you see, he's heavy. He's heavy. You know, I don't expect him to keep up with the guards or even Kevin Durant, who are very like majestic in the way they move on the basketball court. Anyway, um, I don't know if Steve Nash, what's next for him. I don't know. It, it would, I would not be surprised if he was just completely done with coaching after what three seasons of just nothing but craziness he might just be like hey let me let me chill at the crib with my wife and my kids and do more tiktoks i say like the life yeah you got the money ain't like he you know searching for a bag enjoy retirement steve nash or become an assistant you know or, or something I, I just don't know i don't know if another team like come come off season x team fires their coach and now they're doing a bunch of candidacy interviews i don't know if i'd be looking at steve nash like let, let me give him an interview you know what i'm saying um, but if it's for an assistant, a shooting coach, a development coach like he was with the Golden State Warriors before he got this gig, for sure, for sure, he could do that. Not no head coaching job. So, y'all let me know in the comment section how, how y'all feel. Um, Steve Nash fired, E-May in potentially, Brooklyn Nets, can they turn around the season? I'll be down there looking.